What's up, everyone? We're back with more Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Time for the third part of the trial after this quick recess. 17th of April, 12.41 p.m. The Old Bailey Defendant Santa Chamber. Oh, Gina. Ah, Gina. How are you holding up? Still being herself, I see. I'm starting to feel quite warmly towards her frequent cold shoulders now. <laughs> Guinea! Are you alright? Why aren't you saying anything? What's the point, eh? Why well, go to all this trouble and fight so hard for the likes of me? What? Well, you saw it. That picture. What picture? Ah, oh, you mean this one? The photograph taken by Hurley's red-handed recorder? Yeah, that is pretty incriminating. Well, I didn't think it would have captured a scene like this, that's for sure. It's hopeless. Anyone who sees that's gonna think I did it, ain't they? Well, I won't pretend it wasn't a bit of a shock when the prosecution first presented it to the court. Surely you've gotta have your doubts about me now. You can't still th think I'm innocent. Of course I can. <laughs> Genny, why don't you talk to us? Tell us what really happened that night. Eh? Reno's cleverly managed to piece together a lot of new information, but still. We'd really like to hear it from you. Alright then. Oh shoot, we're actually gonna get to learn. It was after we'd had that dinner together at your place, Rod Aris. When we all had a chat up in your office, didn't we? Yes, I remember. After that, I just couldn't get to sleep. So I slipped out and went down the street to the two to, to one to Windermeg's place. I had to know. If Iris' story was there- Oh, sorry. If Iris' story was there or not, the Hound of the Baskervilles. I don't know what it's, what it's about or nothing. But if you ask me, there's something in, in it that Shorms don't like. Something what he don't want other people reading. So that's why he lied to Iris about sticking in in, in lug with Winderbanks for safekeeping. At least that's what I thought at the time. So you broke into Winderbanks. I just had to know if it was there or not. I mean, I had no idea all of... Oh, that was gonna kick off, did I? I struck the lock and snuck inside. It was dark as you like in there. So I gave the oil lamp on the counter a bit of wick. And that's when... What do you think you're doing? Yeah, I assume that was one makes himself. I nearly died, I did. The next thing I knew... I grabbed the gun off the counter and was waving in the air lock. I don't know what. Ah, so she did it in self-defense, thinking it was someone coming to kill her. Oh, you're, you're the girl who was here this afternoon. I didn't think pickpockets went in for armed robbery. The, the mantle script. Have you got it here? Did Shelms leave a, a load of papers with you? A story. I beg your pardon. The hound of the something or other. If it's here, I want to see it. I'm sorry, young lady, but I'd sooner die than relinquish an article belonging to one of my customers. I don't want it. What would I do with it anyway? I just want to see it's here, that's all. Oh, you want to see it, do you? I want to know if Shom's really pondered here or not. Please, just let me see it and I'll go. Oh, very well then. Very well then, but for pity's sake, stop waving my gun around, would you? Okay. So then the old cove unlocked the storeroom door and we both went inside. And it was there, alright, the mantle script. Shams weren't lying after all. You did all that just to check for me, Guinea. Anyway, then there was a bit of a kick up out in the main bit of the shop. 
Skulkin brothers arriving on the scene, yes? What was that noise? Someone's breaking in. Dear me, is this some burglar's convention here tonight that I don't know about? I think I forgot to shut the door behind me. Sorry. I'd better go and take care of it. Could I possibly have my gun back? Oh, well I'll come with you in. Now don't be foolish, young girl. You must stay right here. Don't leave this room under any circumstances. He was a nice guy. And with that, he took a gun out of my ends and walked back out into the shop. I'm back in the storeroom, like he said, straining my ears in the dark to hear what was going on. It sounded like they got into a bit of a scrap. I started to think I should help, see? So I was just about to go out the storeroom myself when. I heard a couple of shots go off. Two off, I think. Almost at the same time. And then there, w there he was, right on my feet, lying face down on the floor. I was right next to the storeroom door, so I slammed it shut and locked it quick as you, as you like. Quick as you like. Because you thought whoever had shot Mr. Winterbank might come for you. Yeah. So I went to grab the old coast gun. I figured it, I'd put up a, a fight at least. But when I got a better look at him, I knew. Winterbank was a goner. Shit. I felt funny in my head all of a sudden, kind of dizzy. And after that, I don't remember nothing. Well, it sounds like she probably picked up the gun and then passed out from, or fainted. That must be when you passed out, Gina. If, if I hadn't done what I did, the Oko might still be alive. Did you tell the police everything you just told us? Of course I did, but they didn't believe a word of it, did they? All they said was, if I kept keep telling lies, it'd make things even worse for me. It'll be alright, Guinea. It'll be alright, Guinea. Don't worry. Just stay strong a little longer. Rino's about to put the real culprit through the mill. That cove what was there in the afternoon. That Egert Benedict. Yes, that's the one. This dude. I still remember how he looked at me like I was nothing. Yeah, he was there that night. We don't know his real name yet, but I'm convinced that he's involved somehow. <sighs> don't worry. I'm sure that even if we don't know his real name, no one changes their clothes in this series, so he'll be easy to spot out by telling, by just telling the police what he looks like. Anyway, thank you for telling us what happened, Gina. I appreciate your honesty. You what? You can leave it all to Reno's capable, ha all in Reno's capable hands now, Guinea. Mr. Naruto. Yes? How come you trust me? I don't get it. I mean, have you forgotten what happened here before? Come on, it was only two months ago. Me and McGilded. We told you a whole pack of lies. And you got the bog trot off with him. Even though he was a killer. No, I can never forget that. Oh. I did what I thought was best at the time. But the pain of that error of judgment doesn't get any easier to bear. Still, don't forget that I also made you a promise. I told you that I'd be on your side to the bitter end, no matter what. But what if I'm lying? You could be working to get another killer off the hook for all you know. Huh. I was once in your position, Gina. I was the accused in a trial. You were? Before I left Japan, I was accused of murder. As strange as it might sound, the circumstances of the crime were pretty damning. I was sure that no one would believe it wasn't me who'd done it. 
Oh, Reno. There was one person who stood up for me, who believed in me and was prepared to defend me. My best friend. Uh, I'm hearing this game again. Uh, I don't, don't need the waterworks again. Ryunosuke, no one believes in you more than I do. Leave this to me. All you need to do is put your faith in me, and I'll do the rest. I was so happy I cried. But even then, someone inside me, I couldn't help thinking. Surely he doesn't really believe in me. Not completely. But I was wrong. As soon as my trial began, it was obvious. He had an absolute unwavering belief in me. Man. Why am I getting nostalgia for this already? Even though it, it was. It's not like I've been playing this game for months or anything. I only started playing like a month ago or so. And in turn, I developed an absolute unwavering belief in him. Since then, I came to realize. If you want someone to believe in you, you have to believe in the other person first. What are you saying? I promise you, Gina, that no matter what happens, I'll keep believing in you. So you don't need to worry. I won't let you down. Now I'm a Dava, and a no good liar. You're not like the Gildan. I know that. Eh? That's right. You're our friend, Guinea. Iris. We know you better than you think. And we've come to the conclusion that you're someone we can trust. Yes. That's really all we need to know. Exactly. Man, I love this game so much. Um, this is not right, right? Um, I... What a blessed little girl. She puts on a brave face and acts like she cares for no one, but in the end, she's still a kid. Def Defendant G Gina Lestrade and her legal representative. C court proceedings are about to resume. Please head into the courtroom immediately. Also, I've got to say, freaking Kazuma's theme, like uh, this, like the emotional version of his theme, that shit gets me every time it plays. Uh, at least I didn't actually break down crying this time, but god damn, that, that theme gets me. Yes, of course. Thank you. Alright. Speaking of Cosmos theme, here's the regular version. I'd been both a defend defendant and a defendant defending lawyer in my time. So I knew only too well just how hard it was to put all your faith in another. And I also knew just how hard it was to bear the burden of another putting all their faith in you. This is it at last. The final chapter. The final battle. Well, of this game at least. Wish me luck, Susato-san. And I hope you're watching over me too, partner. All right. Time for us to get back in there. April 17th, 1.40 p.m. The Old Bailey Courtroom. We are back. I hereby call this court to order as we resume the trial of Miss Gina Lestrade. Lord Van Zykes, have you successfully supported... Sopane, the witness. The Soponia was delivered to the communication station where the man works immediately, my lord. However, the heavy rain has delayed the arrival of his carriage, it would seem. Hmm, I see. Let us turn our attention to Inspector Gregson's 
Cressus of the case heard by the court this morning. Glaring omission of the third bullet in your report is a serious blunder, Inspector. Yes, um, I can only apologize, my lord. And although the defendant's chemical analysis of the blood at the scene makes for a compelling argument, I cannot permit such untried methods to be used as, as evidence in my courtroom. <laughs> it's a big mistake to cross Hurley and me. A very big mistake. Oh, the bailiff's here. Ahem. My lord, the sub witness has just arrived in the building. Thank you, officer. Show him to the stand without delay. Mr. Eggert Benedict. I didn't expect to be crossing paths with him again so soon. And certainly not like this. But, cross paths we shall. And here he is. Look at this man. Four witnesses on stand. Thank you for complying with the court's opponent at such a short notice. Short notice, sir. But of course, my lord. As an upstanding member of London society, it is my pleasure to oblige. Now, kindly state your name and occupation for the record. Ash Ashley Graydon, communications officer. Ashley Graydon. Graydon. Huh. I'm trying to f I'm trying to find the joke here. And he has Ash and Gray in his name, so maybe it's a co just a color name? I don't know. Mr. Graydon and I both work at London Central Communication Station. And communication station is certainly a phrase like this. Now, perhaps somebody would kindly explain what all this is about. You were apprised of the situation by the court officer on your way here, I presume. Yes, I was. Something to do with the murder that took place at a pawnbroker's on Baker Street. And some nonsense about me having been there on the night in question. That is the accusation, indeed. This really is beyond a joke, you know. Very well, without further delay, the court will hear your testimony now, Mr. Graydon. You will resp respond to the accusation made against you under oath. Oh, <laughs> forgot about his freaking Jojo poses. Gladly, my lord, gladly. There we go. I feel like I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that his his testimony is gonna involve reactions from like the brothers because they're still up here. Like, there's probably gonna be like reactions about like because if he is an accomplice of those two then they're probably gonna react and be like, wait, that's not what happened, or they're gonna, like, show tells of, like, realizing that there's some inconsistency. Naturally, I have occasion to make use of pawnbroken services from time to time, but are you seriously suggested I colluded with these thugs to break into the place on the night of the murder? I have no intention of admitting to such an outrageous accusation, even if certain parties here present claim present claim that my blood was found at the scene. Some ske scaramouche detective's homebrewed tin tincture can hardly be taken as serious evidence. Okay. So, you deny the accusation completely, do you? I must say I am dismayed. For the highest court in the land to be swayed by the self-professed detective's toy, it was the will of the jury, and our great British justice system demands that the jury's will is upheld. Though I don't agree with it on most of the time. Then it would seem we have the misfortune of a most inept assembly of jurors today. Well, we see- well. Van Zykes hasn't been saying it, so I guess you're picking up the slack here, Graydon. By golly! How long am I expected to be detained here? If, following the defendant's cross-examination, your involvement in this matter has not been established, you will be free to leave immediately. Good, then I shall be away in time for, for afternoon tea. Some small consolation, at least. You know, funny, funny you mention that, I'm pretty sure Giselle said the same thing about wanting to go to a tea party. And then she wasn't able to make it because, you know, 
she committed murder. And I think the same's gonna be the case with you, sir. Let us not hold up Mr. Graydon any longer than necessary, counsel. Proceed with the cross-examination. So, we meet again, Mr. Edgar Benedict. Or is it Mr. Graydon? My apologies, you are. Rinosuke Norohoto, defense lawyer. We have met. If you say so, Ashley Graydon, enchanté. So. Oh. Ah. I trust we can conclude this quickly. Wow. Taking off the hat. You have some pretty stylish hair, not gonna lie, though. You know, you know what he looks like? Oh god, what's her name? She's like one of the... I think her name's like Diane from Little Witch Academia or something. This dude looks like he could be her br her brother or something. Uh, but I'm not holding your flashy hat while we do. Take your damn hat back. Oh, he's actually he's actually keeping the hat off. Okay. Oh. Okay. The accusation. Ah, I accidentally paused the recording and I skip. Okay, never mind. All I did was pop. All I did was press. All I did was click once and start the cross examination. We're good. Okay, let's get to it then. Hold it! Yes, we even met in the very pawnbrokery where the crime took place on the afternoon of the day in question. Though, of course, you introduced yourself by a different name at the time. It was Mr. Eggert Benedict, I believe. Tell me, what Objection. made you... This witness here is to the witness here is to testify about events that took place that night. He is under no obligation to answer such unrelated questions. You can't be serious. Thank you, because I certainly do not feel inclined to answer such an inappropriate question. So he's gonna be evasive, is he? In an effort in an effort not to give anything away. This could be tricky. Alright. But are you seriously suggesting I colluded with these thugs to break into the on into the place on the night of the murder. Hold it! Have you seen these two men before? This pair? No, I don't associate with criminals. I like how they both look away. Said by a man who introduced himself as Edgar Benedict. I'd like to know who I have to thank for this. Who made this outlandish accusation against me? The unloyal there in the black. This is a farce. Holmes, whose idea was it to permit an outsider to work in a British court anyway? Uh, I believe that was the Supreme Justice Court man. Well, needless to say. Hold it! Where were you around one in the morning on the night in question, sir? This is past the hour at which I would normally retire. Certainly. I was not in the company of these rapscallions. You're able to prove that. Objection! Listen carefully, my learned, my learned Nipponese friend, for you appear to be under a gross misapprehension on this point. What do you mean? The witness maintains he was not at the scene of the crime. He has no obligation to prove his absence. If your accusation is that the witness was present at the scene, the obligation lies with you to prove your assertion. Eh, I don't think that's how that works, but sure. You will fulfill that obligation before putting any more unreasonable questions to the witness. Silent Victory Wiggle, thanks. The newest member of the Wiggles. Hold it! Long, ba, 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 blood was found at the scene of the crime, there's no question of that. Mr. Sholmes's chemical analysis has positively identified the substance as such. 
But, uh, but I am not the only human to have blood running through my veins, am I? How could you be so sure that the blood is mine? It could equally be the blood of one of these two miscreants. I mean, one of them is wearing green, but it's not the same color of green. Every individual's blood has a slightly different composition, it seems. Mr. Sholm's chemical is able to differentiate different- Spare me the science lesson. Who is this Sholm's character, anyway? Oh, I- I assumed all Londoners would know the name. He's a great- well, a renowned detective. So, even you are unable to bring yourself to say great detective. I mean, yeah. I think Ryanosuke knows him more than the average person. A great detective, you say? <laughs> now we're in, now we're in the realm of fairy tales, are we? Uh, hello. Excuse me. What's up? You have something to say about that, Mr. Skulkin? Er, it what me? No, the Mr. Skulkin next to you. All right, I've had enough to hear of this. How many times have I gotta tell you? Yes, I know, you're not Big Bro Sulky. <laughs> Comedy. Mr. Nash Skulkin. Hey, cool blimey, governor. You, you what? Is it not the case that when Mr. Graydon just spoke, a thought went through your mind? Would you care to share that thought with the court? Hey, me thoughts? Uh, I don't have none of them. It must have been him. You what? Mr. Nash Skulkin, answer the question, please. What went through your mind when Mr. Graydon just spoke? Nothing, honest gov, nothing. Uh, I was just thinking. If he waves his arm around like that much more, it'll open up the wound again, that's all. What wound? Well, he took the bullet, of course. It was only two days ago. It ain't gonna be healed up yet. So I was, um, uh, well, you know, I was worrying for him and... Oh, shit. Oh. Bells, bells. Mr. Graydon, did you hear that? What? Your comrade is worried about you, it seems. On account of your injured arm. What a sweet man. Nash is a, ni Nash is a nice dude. My lord. Yes, Mr. Graydon. I have no idea what these two wretches are talking about. You say as you're grasping your arm. Certainly, I should be expected to answer anything in which I shouldn't be expected to answer anything in relation to their mindless insinuations. Mm. We know that someone other than the victim was hit by a bullet at the scene of the crime two nights ago. From the height of the bullet hole in the wall, that person was likely hit in the upper arm or thereabout. Perhaps you'd allow a court official a court official to examine your arm, sir. The left arm that you're currently clasping with your right hand, as if in pain. No. Daga Kotowaru. You have shown no evidence whatsoever that links me to these common thieves. Oh. Accordingly, I am not obliged to permit any such invasion of my privacy. As I've already said, I'm completely uninvolved in all this. I've never had anything to do with the pawn brokery where this fellow was killed whatsoever. Well, that's a blatant lie, frick. Especially when Gregson's right next to you. I take offense at the insinuation that I was in any way involved. Oh, you claim to have nothing whatsoever to do with Winnebeck's pawn brokery. My lord? The defense would like that last statement to be added to Mr. Graydon's formal testimony. Very well, Council. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you- Yeah, we'll see how this works for you. The bottom line is I never had anything to do with the pawnbroken establishment where the man was killed. Uh, can I just do this? Yeah, let's- let's press it first. Maybe we get the answer if, like, Gregson has a reaction. Never had anything to do with it. You forget that I was there, Mr. Graydon, on the very afternoon of the incident. Not to mention Gregson. Obviously, I am not a complete stranger to the pawnbrokers. 
I'm currently on the lookout for an armchair to furnish my study. No, you were there to redeem an article. I have no idea what you're talking about. Knew it. Excuse me. Glad it didn't present the freaking disc. You have something to add, Inspector. Er, come again, sunshine. You were there too, Inspector, weren't you? That afternoon. Well, yes, I do remember meeting yourself in the pawnbrokers that afternoon. Yo, your young Japanese assistant, and the accused were all present, as I recall. And at that time, this witness, Mr. Graydon, was trying to acquire a particular article. Um, well, now... I was probably trying to hide info about that... about the disc. I'm afraid I don't remember too clearly. What? But, but you must! I'm not going to lie and pretend I remember something that I don't. What's going on here? He's trying to cover up info about the disc. Rexy showed us a picture before, didn't he? You know, from the cameras that Hurley installed in the Winterbanks. Yes, of course. Indeed. And the gentleman pi pictured w And the gentleman pictured bears a striking resemblance to the witness, I must say. There we go. Exactly, which proves that Mr. Graydon was in the shop on the afternoon in question. At no point have I denied that fact. I merely entered the shop to peruse the articles on sale and have a word with the broker. Nothing more. Gregson, you are trying to cover up for this disc nonsense. This makes no sense. I don't know why he's trying to cover up for the for the thing about the disc, but he clearly didn't want us to have it. He didn't want he didn't want Van Zykes to submit the evidence or anything. Uh but why would Gregson be trying to avoid giving testimony about what happened? I bet you we're gonna have to just present the disc now. I think he has no intention of telling us anything. He's well aware that the less he says, the less chance he has to give himself away. Hmm. The complete opposite of Harley, then. He seems to think that the more he says, the better. Well, at least I managed to prize a little more information from these witnesses' lips. Well, thanks to the Skulkin brothers. Yes, they were the key to it, after all. So he says he had nothing to do with Windabanks. Well, we know that's not true. Perhaps now would be a good time to have a proper look through the court record. Good idea. You never know what tiny scrap of information could become a valuable weapon. Good point. Hmm. Objection. There we go. I was right. You do have to present this. Have you ever seen this disc before, Mr. Graydon? Why? Is it supposed to mean something? This disc was, until the day of his murder, in pawn in Mr. Windebank's shop. It was redeemed by the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade, that afternoon. However, somebody mysteriously appeared to try to take it from her. And that someone was you, of course. Wasn't it, Mr. Graydon? As I have reiterated numerous times now, you are mistaken, that was not me. I've never seen that disc before in my life. It may have escaped your notice, but there is a small smear of blood on the disc. Ah, oh, yes, resulting from an abrasion of the thumb, perhaps. I didn't do it as wheezy of a voice as usual for the judge, but whatever. That's right, the surface of the disc is covered in hundreds of tiny metal bumps. In the skirmish to acquire the disc, the thumb of the, thumb of the person who tried to take it suffered minor lacerations. Alright, show your hand. So, while the disc bears the remnants of that skirmish in the form of that smear of blood, some of the person in question must bear the remnant also, in the form of a scratch. Good gracious! Indeed it must! Mr. Graydon. You refused to allow a court officer to examine your arm before. Are you now going to refuse, refuse to allow us to examine your thumb? As I have no doubt that it bears a small scratch consistent with the smear blood on the disc. Well, well. Would seem I underestimated you. 
What? What is the meaning of this? Wow, that desk glam matched perfectly with the music. That was awesome. So you admit it now. You admit you have a scratch on your thumb from when you attempted to take the disc from the defendant. Order, order! Well, Mr. Graydon? Graydon? I don't know. It would appear there has been a, something of a misunderstanding here. I did not attempt to take the disc as you put it. No, quite the reverse. What are you trying to say? It's really quite simple, you see. The disc was mine from the outset. Is there some kind in taking an item that you own out of pawn? What? It would seem, Mr. Graydon. But in this piece of evidence, my learned friend has established a link between yourself and the incident. Accordingly, you will tell the court everything you know about this disc now. As you wish. I already know that we're... I already... I mean, we know that it says McGilded on the back of it, so you're not going to get away with that. Though I'm quite sure it has nothing whatsoever to do with the pawnbroker's murder. Witness testimony. The disc. There's a note on the disc saying for McGilded, but the item belongs to me. Oh, never mind, I guess we're not going to get him on that. The redemption ticket was stolen from me by the accused, that filthy guttling on the day in question. I pres proceeded at once to the shop in order to explain my situation and redeem my article. In the end, of course, the disc was taken by the police. In other words, I had absolutely no reason to break into the shop later that same night. Oh, yes you did. Yes you did! Do I hear you correctly, sir? McGill, did you say? The famous London philanthropist. Who perished in this very courtroom two months ago after being acquitted of a distinctly messy murder. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord, the one and the same. Good lord, Mr. Graydon. Are you saying that Mr. McGilded and yourself were acquainted? Yes, that is correct. Uh... And we still need to figure out how the hell McGilded even died. I hope we get to figure that out. And that's like kind of a big thing to have a freaking someone die in a courtroom. Order! Well, I certainly didn't expect to hear that name uttered here in my courtroom again. According to what Gina told us, this disc was placed in pawn on the fateful night two months ago. McGilded himself gave instructions to deposit it at Winterbanks. It's funny that Mr. Graydon here is claiming the disc belongs to him, isn't it? In all likelihood, he's lying. So he appeared that afternoon at Winterbanks in order to get his hand on Miss on Miss on McGilded's disc for some reason. Counsel, you will commence your cross examination, please. Alright. Oh, well, we still ain't met forty minutes yet, so let's try to get through this. Mm, would you care to explain how this belongs to you? As you will observe. I like how he still does the thing where he like, touches the rim of his hat even though he doesn't have a hat on. As you will observe, a communications officer such as myself commands a fine salary. You are certainly exquisitely dressed, sir. I gotta say, it does take some confidence to wear an outfit of all white. So you see, I have... I have little need to make use of the services provided by the pawnbrokery trade. However, I did once find myself in difficulties having misplaced my purse whilst on an errand, which is why I pawned my fine black overcoat to the broker in question. You claim that was your overcoat. Obviously, and in my haste, I clean forgot that the music box disc was in its pocket. And yet there is a note on it that reads for McGilded. I am a collector of rare and unusual music box discs. U music box music. I like how even Van Zykes is just kind of like, this dude is spouting some bullshit, I don't trust it. I first met Mr. McGilded at a gentleman's club in the city, and was interested to discover that he shared my penchant in that area. So, the disc in question. It's a pre-production sample. 
I promised to let McGilded, Mr. McGilded hear it. But then you forgot that it was in the pockets of the overcoat you were forced to pawn. Yes, exactly. Gina didn't mention any of that in a testimony two months ago, didn't she? It took me a second to process that. I'm not used to her calling her something besides Guinea. No, because McGill threatened her to keep her mouth shut. Which means that if we dig too deeply here, it's going to expose Gina's perjury. Oh dear, this is complicated, isn't it? Let's leave it alone for the time being. Just press everything. So you're saying that Miss Lestrade lifted the ticket from your pocket or bag? That's right. Despite being mindful of danger when walking in the ins insalubrious areas, her kind frequent. Miss Lestrade did no such thing. Well, of course you would take that stance, but the girl is a regular offender. You came to the pawnbroker that day, prepared with all the information you needed to identify the defendant. You were looking for her, that's what brought you to Windebanks. To get your hands on Mr. McGilded's disc. Objection. My loaded friend is a veritable font of nonsense. Nonsense? Make it care of the prosecution. Counsel, you will refrain from conjecturing in this way. Is that clear? Yes, my lord. It was a conjecture. Then I will continue with my testimony for what possible use it can be. Had you ever been to Windbanks before? Only once for the purpose of pawning something. But like many, I enjoy browsing in such establishments. So when you noticed that the pickpocket had taken your ticket, you chased after her, is that correct? Yes, that's right. I didn't notice at first, of course, such as the art of the pick first. But when I did, I headed to the pawnbroker at once in order to reclaim my coat before the thief could. I was merely trying to recover what was rightfully mine in the first place. Uh, he can say what he likes because he knows that we have no evidence to contradict him on this. Don't worry, we'll get him. In the end, of course, the disc was taken by the police. Hold it! Yes, it was taken by Inspector Gregson here, wasn't it? That's right, this was the very man. Apparently, the police are collecting anything that has a connection to Mr. Degelden. Right? As evidence. Excuse me! What you got? There's something wrong, Inspector. Oh, uh, well, uh, What do you mean? The last remark Mr. Graydon made in his testimony seemed to trouble you in some way. Uh, no, no it didn't. It's nothing. Leave it alone. Let me ask you this, Inspector. Why is Scotland Yard gathering Mr. McGill's possessions? I can't tell you someone like that, Sunshine. What is it, Inspector? Investigative secrets? Yes, exactly. You should know all about that. Magnus McGilded, who died so unexpectedly after his trial two months ago. A man renowned throughout the, the capital for his great contributions to public life. Yet he had a dark side to... Where are you going with this, Van Zykes? I suppose the police are dealing with the aftermath of his nefarious activities, are they? That's enough! Coppers like me have duties to carry out that we're not at liberty to talk about. That's all you need to know. Duties conferred by Lord Strongheart, I presume. The Lord Chief of Justice appears to have great faith in you, Inspector. God damn. He is putting him through the through the grinder right now. The bottom line is if you want to get more out of me, you're gonna need Lord Strongheart's paw, paw print first. What's all this about? It's like there's something going on between Gregson and Lord Van Zykes here. Well, it would appear that the inspector has revealed all he, he is at liberty to reveal. Mr. Graham, let us return to your testimony. Mm. Gladly, my lord. 
There's definitely something going on there. One sec, let me let me try going back and not pressing Greg's in. Is that right? That's what, what the inspector said, at least as he sees my disc. And thanks to the skirmish with that rastro lice, I snagged the end of my thumb at the same time. On the disc in question is this disc here. Yes, it is. Scotland Yard have indeed been gathering items believed to have been the property of McGilded, presumably to aid their investigations in some way. Not something I would be aware of. I really didn't know the man well anyway. After all, I'm merely a communications officer with a penchant for a penchant for m with a penchant for music boxes. And from boy and poses. Listen. He's gonna be in part nine, okay? In other words, I had absolutely no reason to break into the shop later that same night. Hold it! But perhaps he'd seen some inner value among the forfeited items. No, not at all. Oh. A valuer was brought in by the police to assess everything in the shop. Without exception, every article on the shelves is common or garden brick and brack. In that case, it's clear. That you broke into the shop later that day in order to recover Mr. McGilded's disc. Have you not been listening, man? Even if I had wanted to recover the disc, you may recall that it had been seized by the police that afternoon. It was not there was no more in the shop that night than I. As I keep saying, I simply had no reason to break in. So there was nothing in the guild that's left in the shop that night. Nothing this man might have been after. I see where we're going with this. I wonder if that's really true. Right now, if you have some evidence, then let him have it. I'm dying to see that irritatingly assured expression of his crumble. I am as well. Gilded slipped the disc into his coat pocket and had deposited at Windbanks. Then, when he realized he was going to be arrested on suspicion of the omnibus murder, he threatened Gina and forced her to take the redemption ticket. There's no doubt about it. That witness is lying through his pearly white teeth. Police were obviously after anything left behind Lama Gilded as well. That's why Inspector Gregson ended up taking the disc into custody that day. But Gregsy's being very strange about all this. Must be a reason for that, I'm sure. I just don't want to know what it is. Yet. For now, I need to focus on exposing the fact that Mr. Graydon is lying in his testimony. And I know just what that is. Be gone from here. Shit. The box. This disc was deposited at Winterbanks on Magnus McGilded's instructions. Maybe we'll actually get to see what the box is now. You knew that, and you went there with the intention of obtaining it for yourself. Objection! Conjecture again. And in any case, the disc was taken into custody by the police that afternoon. The witness had no reason to visit the pawnbrokery again that Objection. night. Sorry, my learned friend, but that's not true. What? How dare you use my catchphrase for you against me? You pompous ass! Mr. McGilded had another article in pawn at Winterbanks. As the second pawnbroker's ticket proves. Ugh. There were two articles belonging to Mr. McGilded in Winterbanks pawnbrokery. And the reason you broke into the shop that night was to recover the second one. Together with your two accomplices, the Skulkin Brothers. Ugh. Ooh. This is the second ticket, is it? What had the men deposited? The article description reads, One small box. Rather vague description, it seems to me. Are you, are you suggesting that I broke into the pawnbroker of these clowns in order to steal some trinket box? I believe there are adequate grounds to suspect that you did. This is absurd. Why on earth would I do such a thing? Once the article had been forfeited, I can simply walk into the shop and purchase it. There would be absolutely no need for me to resort to, resort to theft. To 
good point. Ooh, indeed. Well, this makes a solid argument. So that means that for some reason, this Graydon fellow needed a small box that very night, does it? It's time to put an end to this nonsense, my lord. Next time on the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Adios, ciao, and bye-bye. Signing off until next time. Jam matane.